Hi everyone, hope you're well. In today's video, we're going to talk about the world of inter internal server errors. If you've ever encountered a 500 internal server error while browsing the web or developing a website, then this video is for you. So what are internal server errors? Uh, an internal server error, often referred to as a 500 internal server error, is an HTTP status code that indicates a problem occurred on the server while processing a request. It's a generic error message and it doesn't provide a specific detail about the underlying issue, but instead it lets us know that something went wrong, wrong on the server's end. There's quite a few common causes, one of them being software or coding errors. So this basically occurs due to programming mistakes, compatibility issues, or incorrect configurations in the, software's so in the server's software or code. Even a small error in the code can cause the entire server to malfunction. Another reason might be server overload or resource limitations. So this basically just means that if a server receives an excessive number of requests or lacks the necessary resources like memory, disk space, or processing power, it can become overwhelmed and fail to handle the actual requests properly. Database problems can also trigger several um, internal ser server requests. Um, issues like connectivity problems, corrupt data, incorrect queries, all can prevent the server from retrieving or storing information in the database correctly. As a result, the server encounters errors while trying to fulfill requests that involve database operations. Improper file or directory permissions can be another culprit behind internal server errors. If the server doesn't have the necessary permissions to access certain files or directories, it won't be able to fulfill requests that require accessing those resources leading to internal server errors. And lastly, problems with third-party services or dependencies can also cause internal server errors. Many websites and applications rely on external services or libraries to function correctly. So if there are any issues with those services, um, it can affect the service performance and result in the internal server errors as well. So let's talk about troubleshooting and resolving internal server errors. When you're encountering this type of error, server ad admins or developers need to investigate the server logs for more specific error messages or codes. They'll review the server's configuration, uh, check the code for errors, verify database connections, and ensure sufficient resources and test dependencies to identify and fix whatever the underlying issue is as well. If you're a user and you encounter a server error, there are some uh, that typically involves a sort of systematic approach to identify and resolve the underlying issues. So here are some steps that you can follow to handle internal, internal server errors if you ever come across them. Refresh the page. So sometimes internal server errors can be very temporary or caused by a minor glitch. So start by refreshing the page, see if the error will resolve itself. If you're experiencing internal server errors on multiple websites or applications, it's actually possible that the issue lies with the server itself. So check with the website or application provider or contact your server admin to determine if there are any known server-wide problems. Internal server errors often come with gen generic messages. So to gain more insight into the problem, check the server logs or error logs, and these logs can provide more specific messages or error codes that can help pinpoint the cause of internal server error. You want to ensure that your internet connection is stable and working properly, so as unstable or slow connections can sometimes lead to issues while loading websites or applications. Outdated or corrupt cache and cookies in your web browser can sometimes cause internal server errors, so clear your, web, your browser cache and cookies and then try accessing the website or application again. Internal server errors can also be browser specific or device specific. So if possible, try accessing the website or application from a different browser or device to see if the error persists. And if you encounter an internal server error on a specific website, reach out to the web website admin or support team to report that issue. Provide them with any relevant information like the specific URL, any error message you received, if, um, and any screenshots that you think might be useful. They will investigate and resolve the issue on their end. If you are the server admin or developer and have access to the server, you can perform further troubleshooting steps. These may include uh, reviewing the server's configuration files, checking for any software um, or code errors, verifying database connections, ensuring sufficient ser server resources like memory disk, memory disk space and things like that, and test any dependencies or third-party services.
And if you're unable to resolve the internal server error on your own, it's a, and it's a critical issue affecting your business or website, consider con seeking assistance from professional system admin, web developer, or, or even your hosting provider. They should have the ex expertise to diagnose and fix uh, any complex server-related issues. But always remember, internal server errors can have various causes, and the approach solution depends on the specific in uh, circumstances. It's really important to approach troubleshooting in a systematic manner and seek professional help when needed. But that's about it. That wraps up our video on internal server errors. Um, I hope you find it informative and gained a better understanding of what they are and what causes them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and to stay updated on the latest trend, trends, troubleshooting errors, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments um, or queries, just leave us a message in the comment section below. Thanks.